Welcome to Decades of Horror, the classic era. I meet my old familiar enemy, Death. I fought him before. I've won often. Now he wins. Let him come for me, and I hope he chokes on my soul. This is episode 163, recorded October 22nd, 2023. Gruesome Magazine. I mean, who wouldn't? I mean, souls have to be prepared. To Fight destroy. him all the way. Fight. Don't go down easy. Choke on it. Best it. <laughs> My name is Jeff Moore. On this podcast, we cover the good, the bad, and maybe even the ugly horror films released since the beginning of time. That's not a good Greek uh, accent either. So. Oh, well. In each episode, we'll discuss the monster spirit psychos and villains that have haunted movie-going audiences since the dawn of film history. With me this week are my incredible co-hosts, Chad Hunt, co-host on Decades of Horror, the 70s and 80s an award-winning film producer, director, and a comic book artist and writer. And a sweetheart. How you doing, Chad? I'm good, Chad. <laughs> that's that's the best sweetheart I can do too. I didn't I didn't I didn't mention any body parts or anything. So. Okay. Uh good to good to see you, bud. I'm good. Uh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Also with us is Daphne. The awesome, stupendous, and likable as hell, Daphne. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah. Okay. Daphne's always got that cool, that smile on her face. Just oh. makes makes well, everybody. Well, I'm so happy. happy to see you guys and talk. But it to makes you. us it makes happy that happy. you're happy. I am too. Um, Yay! Doc Rotten, <laughs> the doctor, is not with us. He's on assignment somewhere. Who knows? Hooray! No, I'm just. <laughs> But he'll return, so we can talk about him. You know, if you guys think of anything you, you want to say about Doc. Uh, also, Decades of Horror and Gruesome Magazine are partnering with Play Now Media on several other channels. Decades of Horror, the classic era, can be watched on the classic sci-fi movie channel, the classic horror movie channel, and the Wicked Horror TV channel. So check them out. They got some good stuff there. I guarantee you, you'll find some things you haven't seen before. Uh, and it's uh, it's reasonable if you pay by the year, or there are a fair amount of movies you can watch uh, with ads for free just by signing it up. So, anyway, do that. Spoiler yeah. alert. We're going to spoil this movie, and there's kind of a cool ending on this. Uh, on this podcast, we start by giving some basic details of the film we're covering, followed by each of our first impressions of the movie, and then we move on to a general discussion about whatever interests us, uh, hopefully relating to the movie, although we do frequently go on tangentials, <laughs> or tangentials, as, I, as we sometimes call them. Our topic... Mine haven't seen the light of day in five years. <laughs> and don't ask what the one time was. <laughs> Our topic anyway, is, Isle of the Dead, 1945. <laughs> uh, directed by Mark Robeson. Written by Ardell Ray with uncredited contributions from Val Luton and Joseph Michel. And of course, uh, as an RKO picture from the uh, 40s as part of, uh, it was produced by Val Luton. The cast includes Boris Karloff, Ellen Drew, Mark Kramer, Catherine Emery, Helene Thimig, Alan Napier, Jason Robards Sr., Ernst Deutsch, and Skelton Nags. Where have we heard that name before? <laughs> Red Skelton? Uh, actually, in House of Dracula. Oh, yeah, I remember that guy now, yeah. Yeah, filming locations, RKO Studios. And it has two sets of filming dates. Uh, they began filming July 14th to the 22nd, 1944, but Boris Karloff was having back problems. And in fact, uh, one person was quoted as saying between uh, takes, he was sitting in a wheelchair and he didn't complain, but at some point it just became too much and the doctor said he needed surgery. Uh, they managed to get almost everybody back except one person 
uh, and they finished filming it in December 1st through 12th, 1944. It was released on September 1st, 1945. The budget is estimated at $246,000. Box office, 383000 worldwide. Rentals, or ultimate movie ranking, just said 700000 and I And I think they probably... Uh, they just list box office, so they probably extrapolated from the rentals. Uh, synopsis. On a Greek island during the 1912 war, several people are trapped by quarantine for the plague. If that isn't enough worry, one of the people, a superstitious old peasant woman, suspects one young girl of being a vampiric kind of demon called a vorvalica. Say that five times fast. I was trying to dictate notes into my phone and it never once spelled it right. <laughs> uh, and this is a picture of Ellen Drew as Thea in the typical shadow world of At Val Luton. Yeah. That's a that's some great shots in this movie. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I forgot I was gonna switch over to this one part way through. Ellen Napier. Uh mm -hmm. Batman. Yep. <laughs> wanted to get a good focus shot of him. All righty. So let's move on to first impressions. Well, this one had a couple of also known as too. So mm -hmm. it originally started out as Camilla. He was supposed to be doing that from the uh, Jay Sheridan Lafanu story. But after the first treatment, uh, they they said, yeah, no, nah, that's not going to work. So they've changed it, although you can still see remnants of it. You know, you've got the female uh, Vorvalica. I always want to say Vorlock. Yeah. Something like yeah. that. <laughs> Vorvalica. Accent on the middle syllable. Um, and, so anyway. Um, and then in Germany, it's Die Todesinsel, which is <laughs> The Death Island. So, but it was fun to say, so I, I just wanted to put that <laughs> in there. Uh, time for first impressions. And this is my pick. So I'm going to go first. And, since, and everybody should probably know I'm a Val Luton uh, fanatic. And I, I it, it, this movie is interesting to me because the, the very first time I saw it, I was totally wowed. And then the next time I saw it, I was kind of like, well, what was I so excited about? And then when I watched it the first time, like a week ago here, getting ready, I was again kind of like, what? The, why? I'm not getting what I was so excited about. Uh, but then as, as I watched it uh, multiple times and did more research into it, it, it started to hit me more and more. And I started seeing all the layers to the, the uh, relationships between the people. And how they were setting things up and then i just kind of went nuts and of course you got to pay attention for uh you know the val luton uh what do they call it the luton bus you know the uh the shock jump scares oh, yeah. mm -hmm. and uh i actually had to look that up what's there between a luton bus and jump scares maybe nothing <laughs> <laughs> maybe something depends on the kind of jump scare but uh and I enjoyed the hell out of it. And this movie, I think, is totally and completely driven by the women. And that's what I just blew me away. I mean, of course, uh, Boris Karloff's character is key. But uh, the relationship between the three women was really interesting and cool. Uh, so I, like, I thought Boris Karloff was great. I love the set, this whole idea of it being based on this painting and how sort of close to that they came with their sets. Um, and we're all stuck on this island in this plague and mm -hmm. we can't get off. Wait, it's, it's so anyway, uh, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. So I'm, I'm going to turn it over now because there's lots of stuff to talk about here. Uh, and let's hear from Daphne next. Daphne, had you seen this before? In order, to I had not questions? seen it before. I have not seen it before, um, and I was looking forward to seeing it because of Val Luton. Um, and 
when I was the first half, and, and it's almost like exactly down to the time of a, of half the movie, um, I was, the story really didn't kind of get me. I was enjoying it. I, I was, but I was more like, oh, the atmosphere is great. Um, I love hearing Karloff's voice. Um, you know, I was enjoying it, but it wasn't until um, the doctor died that, um, so the second half of the, of the movie that I felt like then it just sucked me in and then it sucked me in. I was like really into it and, and, mm -hmm. and, and liked the story a lot and just thought it was um, really good. I got through the whole thing. I was getting really um, kind of emotionally. Um, I was getting really pissed because of just the injustice of the stuff that was happening, you know, um, just the, these Boris Karloff's character and Kira just kind of their cruelty and kind of what they represented and um, how they had all the power and, um, you know, we're putting people's lives in jeopardy without really thinking about with no, with no, you know, so certain of themselves. So I was really having some strong reactions to that, which to me is always a good sign. Cause I, I like when I have feelings, when I, when I'm watching yeah, something. Yeah. And yeah. Um, so that, that was, I was definitely feeling that way. And, um, and I thought that the, like I said, the atmosphere was great. Um, after I started getting into it, I really liked the story. I kind of was expecting some things, but even when they kind of went that way, I was still shocked in some ways. I don't know if it was the filming of it that made it more powerful or, or what, but um, yeah, I really liked it. It made me think a lot um, about it afterwards mm -hmm. too, which I always appreciated. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Chad, how about you? Had you seen this before? Nope, never, never seen it before, um, nor have I ever heard of it. So this is this one's a new one for me. Um, yeah, this um, was an interesting film for me because um, it's not what I'd call a, exactly a horror film. It was more of a psychological study, I guess, of of, of these characters and how they reacted to this. Uh, virus that had broken out on this island and nobody could leave and um and how they had to stay away from each other and stuff like that which we've all known how that's had that happen to us here in the last few years so uh you can kind of get get along with that and then um but the interplay between the characters is what I, I found really interesting. I thought it was one of Boris Karloff's best mm -hmm. acting um, jobs that he's ever ever done. He he plays a really really complex character mm -hmm. here. Um, he plays the uh, character called Watch. Uh, they call him a watchdog, and he uh, you, you mess up under his. He's a general in, in the the army there, and he, he's. You mess up under his, you get executed, or you execute yourself, and with no questions asked, and no no quarter given. So he's this hard nosed guy, and but he's also he's that way to protect uh, people under his command and under his uh, under his uh, I guess uh, yeah I guess under his command is the best way to put it. So he comes to see these people that he's trapped on this island with under his command. And, you know, and he's finding it hard because he's being pulled in 50 different directions by by this old lady who's superstitious and thinks there's some kind of vampire, vampiric creature among them. And um, so he's pulled one way and then he's pulled the other way by his friend um, who went along with him over to the island. I can't remember his name right now, but but. Um, he, so he's pulled by his his logic too, and and he's sort of a sympathetic character in a way. And sometimes you hate him, and sometimes you respect what he does uh, because he's really, really just trying to protect everyone. Uh, there and and there was a lot of stuff in there that I I didn't understand. Um, and we'll talk about it, I guess. So there's some stuff in there that I didn't quite get and and um or i didn't pick up on 
But yeah, this was a really, really good movie. I think it came in about a hundred or one an hour and eleven minutes. Eleven minutes, minutes yeah. Or right. something like that. Yeah. So it's mm -hmm. pretty pretty fast mm -hmm. uh paced in telling the story. Mm -hmm. And like I said, this it's it brings up some good ideas, some great concepts and stuff like that. That um all I know that it's all because of a little flea. <laughs> There was a little Spanish flea, but uh, yeah, this is a good good one. I like this movie a lot, and and um, so and just a great Karloff film too. I he, I loved him in this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I do too. I do too. Um, so just so people could get a little better idea of uh, what this is about, uh, we'll now move to. Taglines with Chad. You think a movie this old because the taglines <laughs> always help explain the plot. Yes. Right? Oh yeah, they do. They do such a great job in the hundred and fifty <laughs> some episodes we've done. So okay. Uh, <laughs> well, well, they give away the plot you know, more or less. Look at all these, Jeff. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, uh, but that's not all of them. <laughs> you sure? I found a bunch that weren't under, but I I, I, I guarantee kind. some of these can be re are repeated twice. Uh, <laughs> I think there's maybe two that are repetitious, but anyway, yeah. Okay. Your taglines for Isle of the Dead are as follows. <laughs> she ain't dead yet. She's buried alive. Mm -hmm. Appalling. That's true. That's Weird. True. Baffling. Baffling. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> <laughs> what evil force is loose that empties graves of those long dead and some not dead very long <laughs> buries those still alive leaves behind it death and worse a little yes. Spanish flea <laughs> who if the wind blows the wrong way he burns up and gets uh -huh. died <laughs> science <laughs> Uh, forbidden Adventure, original print ad, all caps. <laughs> <laughs> Accursed Isle of Horror. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> we'll keep you screaming. Original one sheet poster. <laughs> a grave's dank darkness smothers the screams of a girl still alive. That's true. Mm -hmm. Well, it didn't smother it that much because they were in the house going, I you hear don't her know. screaming in, out there? You can hear fingernails scratching on the wood. She's going to ruin that wood. Uh, graves in frenzy, the living buried, the dead distorted. <laughs> were they? I, I don't know. Uh, I, I thought <laughs> I got a poster with that on it, but I don't know what the heck. Dead distorted. Graves, Graves and, and frenzy. frenzy and dead distorted. <laughs> They're not coming in too clear. They're distorted. <laughs> Valaka, the <laughs> word you hear only once for the next time it's uttered, you are dead. Wow, uh, where did they come know. up with this? <laughs> I heard it mentioned a lot of Madame Kira times. said Vorvalaka a lot. Mm -hmm. Vorvalaka. 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 Mm. It sounds like I got a gag. <laughs> Stealthy, nameless terror empties tombs of those long dead, buries those still alive, leaves behind it death and worse. <laughs> worse than the other one that is loose and did worse other than, is it worse than that one? That must be the dead distorted part. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Picture in your mind six survivors on an island. One of these six will be buried alive. None can hear their screams on this far-off horror island except for the Vorvalaka <laughs> and, you know, the general. None <laughs> can stop the terrors of a man-monster holds in... A man-monster holds in... St what? what? None can stop the terrors a man-monster holds in store. <laughs> Somebody watch the movie on that oh, one. Oh, my goodness gracious. They went, Boris Karloff, you must... You know. mm -hmm. I think they all had Karloff in mind when they wrote this. Well, that was a... 
That was a valiant effort, Chad. And that's oh my been God. taglines with Chad. <laughs> he should get special points for those. That I that hope, was pa painful. I hope I don't have <laughs> to do that no more. I don't know what the dead distorted were. Um, There's a so lot just, of stuff in there I didn't know what the hell it was. I thought yeah. the movie was confusing in some places. <laughs> well, just to show that, that those were true here, let's take a look at some posters. Uh, I'm going to stab you. We'll keep you screaming. See, there it is. Horus mm -hmm. is looming over there. Laying off the horror uh, yeah. imagery. And this is uh, the other main one that I see a lot. Which has no taglines whatsoever, because yeah, you shouldn't should. have to know anything besides Boris Karloff. Mm -hmm. um, this first one is the cover of the Blu-ray from what is it, the Warner's archive collection. And then there's this one, which seems to be a pattern. Huh. It seems like there's a fair amount of horror movies where they get this treatment of this orange and green monochromatic mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. a cursed isle of horror so there's there's one there but uh and then we have an italian mm -hmm. which <laughs> has boris <laughs> buried into a bat I, guess. <laughs> I, I don't know the vampire <laughs> They emphasize the woman, the busty woman. Yes, even in she never wore a, a, yeah. a dress like that. No. Again, <laughs> El Vampiro del Isola. Something Isola. the vampire of something island. Yeah, yeah it's a vampire <laughs> of the island, something like that. Vampire yeah. of the island. And then here's our usual uh, dual language one. And, uh, you know, mm -hmm. actually, I kind of like that. I do like I mean, this one. I do I, I, lots of color on it. It doesn't have a lot to do with the movie. but Yeah. Uh, well, we do see the island in a in the background there underneath the red cloud <laughs> so misleading uh so this one i think is our uh, french and dutch one <laughs> lily desmortz uh-huh our hit island der boat der doden lyle uh, desmortz and this is pretty much the, two it, hours uh, later <laughs> a kind of a weird montage of some of the other posters right it's got some yeah. of the same well, and they have a little bit there of the the war um, you know, yeah, the bottom yeah, right. Yeah. And then we have these, uh, I don't know what these are, landscape or, or uh, lobby card type lobby things. Lobby cards, probably. So here's here's where we go nuts with the uh, tag lines. Mm -mm -mm. There's the Graves of in Frenzy or whatever whatever that one was. <laughs> graves in Frenzy. I don't even know. Graves I in Frenzy. I know. For vodka, the word you shouldn't say. So, yeah, we get... Uh, <laughs> Stinky fromage. <laughs> and something similar here. A grave stink darkness. Mm -hmm. uh, this one, Boris Karloff, is lime green. That top one there. That's got a long tagline and tiny print. Mm -hmm. uh, the bottom one uh, must be Spanish. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's probably more uh, along the lines of the movie than the other ones are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 It's just got him contemplating whether he should kill mm -hmm. the girl or let her live. <laughs> it, it always makes me wonder why they, why they, why they, do they, is it cheaper for them to make their own poster than it is to just use a poster somebody already made and put their title on it? I, I don't understand the whole. I guess it kind of fits in with the whole idea of changing the titles all around. All I, th I think. I think uh, usually the foreign posters are different, so I don't know. Maybe when they ship right. the movie over, they have people that mm -hmm. make posters for the movies over there in different countries or I they don't have know. To accentuate different things in different mm -hmm. cultures like in Italy <laughs> anyway my yeah, apologies uh, to, Italy's uh, always got the busty women on the front even though the woman's never looks like that. never looked like <laughs> that in the whole movie okay um well that's it for the posters 
Uh, we did mention this is uh, a movie produced by Val Luton. Now, these are the, mm -hmm. this is our fourth Val Luton on the classic era. We've done Cat yep. People, The Seventh Victim, and The Body Snatcher before. So now we've done two of the three Karloff movies that they did. The third one is Bedlam. Um, and what else haven't we done? We haven't done I Walked with a Zombie, Ghost Ship, Curse of the Cat People. These movies, these Boris Karloff movies that he did for, for Val Luton and were they all RKO pictures? Yes, yes. Um, were some of his best work, I think. Body Snatcher was just an amazing mm -hmm. uh, film for him. And I, I just thought, as far as his, he'll always be Frankenstein's monster mm -hmm. to everybody. Mm -hmm. but as far as his acting ability goes, he was great in Frankenstein. Mm -hmm. But the way he pulled the monster off without saying anything. Mm -hmm. Uh, but his his acting abilities were really brought out in, in these movies, especially mm -hmm. this one. And Body Snatcher as well. Uh, it, was, it was just, um, I remember enjoying Body Snatcher so much just because I, he was really got to show his chops and what he could do as far as acting uh, mm -hmm. and speaking roles and stuff like that. So I, it, it, they were amazing films. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's Cat People. Cat People mm -hmm. was just genius. Mm -hmm. You know, the way it was directed and lit and everything. Right, and that was that was directed by Jock Turner, mm -hmm. and uh, the other three that we've done have all been Mark Robeson. I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't. I actually think this one feels a lot like the Seventh Victim to me. Um, there's just a lot of ordinary stuff going on until you it all sort of weaves its way into hmm. what's going on. I don't know. Um, no, that's a, that's a good point. Thinking <clears throat> about that now, there's just normal life. Right. And then something strange happens. Yeah. yeah. Well, but, but in the Luton movies and of course, well, so one of the things I read was, uh, Robeson started on, uh, as an assistant editor mm -hmm. on citizen Kane and Magnificent Amberson, and then got hired by RKO, and when uh, was an editor, and then when Jacques Turner left, they said, "Well, hey, you direct this movie." Well, it so, it was it was very well directed. I think, yeah, I think he did a really good job. Uh, the Seventh Victim was his first film, and then he did The Ghost Ship, Isle of Dead, and Bedlam. But I thought it was curious. It, it was interesting to me that uh, what I remember reading about this before was when they started him off in this little subunit at RKO, I thought they gave him like a $125,000 budget. And so here we are in 1945, only like three or four years after Cap People, and it says the budget was 263000 So I'm wondering if, was that because they had to split the filming or... You know why is that? And then several places that said this only made thirteen thousand dollars. Well, that doesn't add up to the numbers. In the same article, you get these same numbers, so it's more like a hundred and thirty thousand. Um, but anyway, it's strange to me. Conflicting information. I can't just let it go. Man, body snatcher. We don't know who that's directed by. Robert Wise, yeah. So those are the three guys. They had Jack, he had Jack Turner, Robert Wise, and, and Mark Robeson. Robeson mm -hmm. didn't win an Academy Award, but he but he was nominated twice. And uh, Robert Wise, of course, then goes on to do The Haunting and, and win Academy Awards. So it's an amazing set of people that he had working there for this cheap amount mm -hmm. of money. And I think we'll probably talk about the writer too in that group. And she, she yeah. did some excellent writing these scripts, I think. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. She didn't do a lot, but the ones she did are pretty mm -hmm. key in this group, group of like uh, nine films that he did mm -hmm. for that Luton produced for RKO. Um, 
and apparently Robeson was the editor on Cat People that cut the bus scene, which coined the term the Luton bus, hmm. the, the jump scare. So not surprising that we get a couple of those in this film. So I love these Val Luton movies because he didn't have much money and he knows how to make, you know, a walk mm -hmm. down the street at night, mm -hmm. a walk in the woods, a walk, you know, in the hallway, mm -hmm. <laughs> suspenseful yeah. and, right. and uh, terrifying. Well, and I feel like he, like he, when you look at these, when I think about his movies, I feel like I always remember, it just makes me think a lot. And when I think about it, it there's some bigger things going on, um, you know, kind of behind the scenes. And like Chad was saying, this is a very good movie about um, the characters are written really well and they're, how they interact with each other is really interesting. And they, they're getting at bigger themes um, really well mm -hmm. and they're they're beautiful um and atmospheric so um i i just feel like for um you know b pictures or whatever you you would describe them as they are really good they're really good mm -hmm. really really good yeah i think they're top notch and mm -hmm. um what did i see uh martin scorsese listed this as his second out of his 11 scariest horror films this was number two after the haunting huh interesting mm -hmm. uh the other ones on the list by the way are the uninvited the entity dead of night the changeling the shining the exorcist night of the demon the innocence and psycho Interesting. That's interesting because I, yeah. it's, uh, I, I wouldn't say this movie was scary at all. Mm -hmm. uh, it had horror elements in it, mm -hmm. like as far as uh, the the witch thing or vampire thing going on, uh, but I wouldn't I wouldn't classify it as a scary movie. It was a very good tense thriller movie because mm -hmm. you didn't you, you didn't know what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, or what was going on in, until later, but but I don't that I find that kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. There's uh, a lot of other movies like he listed there that I would call scary, but not, not this one, especially second after uh, mm -hmm. what was the first one? The Haunting. <laughs> the Haunting. Okay. Yeah. What by Robert Wise? So yeah, mm -hmm. directed by Robert Wise. Mm -hmm. um, it's an interesting list, and yeah. I remember him being a big plugger of the Queen of Spades when we did it. Mm -hmm. uh, calling it one of the best British horror movies, I think, or something like that. Um, so he he definitely is uh, likes the you know the atmospheric build of mm -hmm. tension. Mm -hmm. It seems like at least when you look at these lists, Mark Robeson, mm -hmm. uh, that picture there at the top, the, the one on the left is Robert Weiss, guy in the middle is Mark Robeson, and the one on the right is Val Luton. Mm -hmm. I've seen that picture before. Yeah, yeah. So we've had that. One. Seen that one before. Pretty common, and he directed. These aren't his award winnings, but they're the ones mm -hmm. I think. Uh, Earthquake was a big disaster movie in the seventies. That was yeah, all star cast. Uh, Avalanche Express with Lee Marvin and Robert Shaw. Um, right after Jaws, I think. You had me at Robert Shaw. Yeah, a couple <laughs> years after that. Uh, the Prize, starring Paul Newman, where he wins a not a ah uh, jeez, oh, <laughs> what's the Nobel Prize? He wins a Nobel oh. Prize, mm -hmm. and they're at they're they're at it, and somebody's like assassinating people or something. I don't know. Hmm. Uh, and then Von Ryan's Express is one of my favorite World War II movies. I, can't really tell you why, but it's the final scene of that movie where Frank Sinatra is running like hell to catch a train is is right up there with uh, Jim Brown's run in Dirty Dozen, hmm. where he's trying to catch up with the Jeep going away. It's it's a it's a really good movie where a bunch of POWs escape and uh, hijack a train and all the things they do to try to outsmart the Nazis trying to stop them. Hmm. That sounds so like anyway, a good movie. I've it is. It's, it's 
It's a really good movie. Uh, he was nominated. Don't look this up, Jeff. He was nominated for Oscars for. Uh, I'll get him wrong if I don't look. Well. Oh, one was Peyton Place, 1958, and then the following year for The End of the Sixth Happiness, which is kind of a weird one. But he also uh, was nominated in Con for The Harder They Fall and Bright Victory in the 50s, and Directors Guild of America for Champion, The Bridges at Toko Ri, he also did, which is a pretty well-known movie. So he did a couple of boxing movies, but he worked with a lot of really famous. Once he got out of RKO and started to work with, uh, he did a couple things for Stanley Kramer and then a couple things for Samuel Goldwyn and, and started getting really big uh, name actors, or as you might call them, prestige pictures, I guess. Yeah. So what do we, any comments about the acting? Oh, I meant to uncover you, Daphne. Sorry, I didn't move you out. <laughs> it's okay. Not used to my new layout yet. Um, any comments on the acting? No, the directing, I'm sorry. Oh, the any directing. comments on, mm -hmm. on Robeson's directing? And, and uh, for example, uh, I noticed two what I would consider jump scares or Luton buses. <laughs> Well, what, what what were they? Uh, well, the one I was when Thea was walking through the woods at night and the bird cries out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the, that's the fake jump scare, you know, like the cat mm -hmm. jumping out or the bus coming. Mm -hmm. And then the other one was when she was in the tunnel and she senses somebody else in there. She goes, Oliver, is that you? Mm -hmm. And then she goes, Kira. And yeah. uh, Mrs. St. Alban screams mm -hmm. Kira and goes running out. Wow, that was and the way it <laughs> echoed through that tunnel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And from that point on, that's like the last five or ten minutes. It's mm -hmm. just yeah. It's good. Creepy as all give out. <laughs> yeah. That gave me the shivers. Yeah. So those are the ones I noticed. I don't mm -hmm. know if, it, if those got you at all. No, that last scene that you were talking about, I, I love that. Like that's that's such a great this this uh, monster that they created you know, this woman just kind of flying out of there and um, becoming the Vor Vo the Vovolak. I always want to say Vordalak. Sorry. I, I don't <laughs> know. I do too. Vordalak. Vordalak. I just think of Matt Boy, You got Chira. Boris Karloff and Vordalak. Uh, yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, I know. I too much of first. a... Yeah. Uh, I, 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 this is one of the things I didn't understand. And this is what I got. This is when I got from it. I would like to hear what you guys think. Her, Mrs. Saint, was it, was it St. Albans? Saint. Yeah. St. Albans. Yeah. St. Albans. She uh -huh. had maybe some kind of form of, where she was going insane or something. Or why, why did she come back out of the grave? And then she was so creepy after she came out of there. I, what I got was that, you know, she had this fear um, of being buried alive that she told the doctor about um, because of her condition. And so I took it as her being buried a lot, waking up in that place, in that state drove her Drove crazy. her mad? Yeah. Okay. I think I didn't see it as like a natural, like something that was happening to her. I think she, I don't know right. what her illness was, but I, that's how, what I, that's how I took it. And then okay. especially, and then with the water dripping on it too, and her not being mm -hmm. able to get out, mm -hmm. um, that's what I thought. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Then I just I didn't understand I, because I knew there was nothing supernatural going on. Mm -hmm. I just kind of right. wondered what what that might have been. Well, there was a there was a comment at one point, and I and I forget who said it, but it was something like, um, she's still partially in a trance and. Oh, mm -hmm. doesn't know what she's doing. I can't remember if it was hmm. if it was Albrecht or Oliver because I think. Hmm. Oh, I think it might have been Oliver. Maybe when they saw um, her after they saw her running around. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so she had this she had this illness, and she talks to the doctor about it and kind of mm -hmm. skirts the issue. But mm -hmm. she's scared to death of being buried alive mm -hmm. because she has this condition where she can go into a cataleptic trance, and you can't mm -hmm. and you think they're dead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can't sense any breathing or heart rate or anything, and that can they can be in that state for up to like a day, and and mm -hmm. this is a 
it's like a true thing. I don't know. I got sidetracked. I was reading a thing about all these cases. Um, so yeah, she was scared to death of that. Uh, and it, it, so I'm going to sidetrack here a little bit um, because I thought it was neat how they laid this out. So she's scared of that. And when mm -hmm. they want to bury her husband, she's freaking out that he's mm -hmm. not really dead. Mm -hmm. And finally, they convince her. I think he, she pokes him with a pin or something. Pin, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um, but then she goes to Dr. Drossus and tells him about it. Mm -hmm. And then he says, don't worry, I'll protect you. I right. won't let that happen to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, then a little while later, Thea is talking to mrs st alban and she is saying i'm scared to death that the general or madame cura are going to get me and mrs st alban says don't worry i won't let that happen i'll protect you mm -hmm. well boom the doctor dies mm -hmm. of the plague uh oh yeah. now there's nobody to protect mrs st alban Mm -hmm. And she goes into a trance and they bury her alive. Oops, mm -hmm. now she's not there to protect right. Thea. Mm -hmm. I just yeah. thought it was really neat how they uh -huh. laid all that out. Yeah. Yeah. Got, got to uh -huh. that situation. And her and her going into a trance just added fuel to the fire and the speculation that yeah. Thea was um the V, the mm -hmm. V word. <laughs> Beware the Vorvalaka. <laughs> Vorvalaka. You gotta write the it. V word. <laughs> Well, so we have, uh, so the first time we get that is, well, what does she say? She whispers, Madam Kira whispers mm -hmm. to uh, Karloff after he gets in the door. Oh, mm -hmm. you're one of my countrymen. You'll understand right. this. We have this one young one over here mm -hmm. full of, what does she say? Rosy cheeks and full of blood. Mm -hmm. And the one upstairs, like waning away. You know, mm -hmm. so there's the mm -hmm. Vorvalica and there's mm -hmm. the, the victim. Then later, uh, what's his name? Robbins, the uh, skeleton nags. He all of a sudden gets faint, starts going mm -hmm. upstairs and collapses mm -hmm. on the stair when everybody mm -hmm. goes to look she's on her way down the stairs mm -hmm. so yeah. that's confirmation right mm -hmm. and everything that happens out there is confirmation right um she goes to uh thea goes to visit mrs alban when she's in bed and um goes to get her medicine mm -hmm. goes to visit her husband and her husband at that point mm -hmm. like dies and that's when i think i think the general ferides comes in the general mm -hmm. uh boris karloff so there's more evidence oh she's right. in the room and he's falling mm -hmm. down and say it just keeps going on and on and on you yeah know? evidence um, and quotes yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's yeah. a play mm -hmm. yeah let the people die <laughs> I, I just thought it was, the way they yes, laid the that I just it was mm -hmm. nice and that Mm -hmm. And there's this, Karloff has this whole arc, right? Where he starts mm -hmm. off being, I'm a man of, I'm, we're going to do what the doctor mm -hmm. says. We're going to mm -hmm. fight that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And even the doctor says, I'm afraid of what's going to happen when I die, because <clears throat> what's he going to do then? All right. Because just doing what I said didn't help. Mm -hmm. anyway. mm -hmm. Yeah. Something that I really liked about the story too, um, and I, I feel like we've talked about it. Um, before in other stories is that some of the best villains are the ones that are so uh, concerned of their right, so sure of their rightness. And mm -hmm. like, he's so morally, he has so much weight. He takes on so much weight um, of being this protector, you know, this uh, watchdog that he just, he ends up doing horrible things, you know, and, and believing things that he wouldn't, wouldn't normally you know, that he started off not believing in, yeah. but then he, you know, and then it just makes him, even to the very end, it just makes him um, such a bad, such a, a, a good villain. Um, but he was also able to, um, to act that way. So you did have a little bit of sympathy that you like understood that his motives um, in his eyes were, were right and right. good mm -hmm. and, and protective. Mm -hmm. um, and he doesn't, it, and I just really thought that that was a really good part for the story and also for Karloff being able to get that point mm -hmm. across. Um, 
And I, I appreciated that because, you know, Car I, like you were saying, Car you know, Karloff did a really good job on this movie and Body Snatcher. I would love, I haven't seen Bedlam, but I am really hoping to see Bedlam sometime soon. Um, and it's just nice seeing him in those, in those roles. Um, mm -hmm. He's awesome as the monster, but here it was really nice. Right. And also, I just loved hearing his voice through the whole through the whole movie. Yeah, he has such a great voice. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. and whenever well, somebody it, uh, imitates a scary voice mm -hmm. or or something like a right. Halloween commercial, it's right. always like this. Yes, with I the know. lift, you know. <laughs> well, and I, I think we talked about this when we did the body snatcher, but. Uh, Luton, when Narkeo signed Karloff for three pictures and kind of gave him to Luton, Luton wasn't too excited about it because that he did wasn't doing the monster kind of mm -hmm. pictures. And but when he talked to Karloff, and Karloff's like, "Yeah, I don't want to do those either. I want mm -hmm. some parts to play." And then they became close friends. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can see that in these movies. Bedlam mm -hmm. is basically it's kind of a you know, I don't know where the first one of those was, but it's sort of an insane asylum expose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He yeah. he runs an insane asylum that's, uh, you know, guilty of all the bad things you hear of from insane asylums. And a woman goes in there sort of, not undercover, but to look for somebody, I think. Or, mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, it's, a, it's, it's good too, but it's also weird. You know, all these Luton movies kind of skirt what you would call horror, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, all right. Mm -hmm. uh, let's look at some of these uh, actors here. Um, Skelton Eggs, that's our buddy from House of Dracula. Mm -hmm. He dies off. Pretty, he's the first one to go. They all what just it? assume he's drunk. Yeah. I'm going to have some fish and chips. Yeah. What a great face. What a great, yeah, he's, <laughs> he's good. Jason Robards Sr. Yeah. His son outshone him in terms of career accomplishments, mm -hmm. but uh, what do you think of what he was doing? He plays this Aubrey character who's kind of yeah. a puzzle. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I wasn't sure about, his was a character that I'm like, I don't really understand. He's a anthropologist what's going on yeah well i mean he is an anthropologist and he but he also is like the the more like the spiritual side as to in opposition to karloff's um more like science mm -hmm. uh and but his 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 personality and his character that was the one character that i was like i i don't know if this this guy's story what is what his deal is. he was an odd duck he really yeah. was he's just mm -hmm. um but he, you're right. He did. He always came in with the, the praying and the spiritual mm -hmm. stuff, and and um, and even if it's to some pagan god, it's better right. than nothing, you know. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's from him being an archaeologist and mm -hmm. seeing all the different cultures and stuff like that. But, but um, yeah. But they, they kind of look to him for a while as as their mm -hmm. go-to guy for mm -hmm. for comfort and leadership and that kind of thing. Yeah, well, and he even said, oh, he's the guy that has, I don't know what the heck the thing is with that urn, but he says a prayer to Hermes, the god yeah. of physicians yeah. or mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, then he, at that one time, somebody, I think somebody dies. And and uh, somebody says there's still no wind. And then he says something really goofy, like, well, we could all take solace in the thought that the tomorrow wind so the wind still. might start blowing you know <laughs> like, yeah the wind was when the wind was still and he uh -huh. and somebody was dead and he's like yeah. well tomorrow the wind might move <laughs> praise be to allah and every <laughs> other god that i'm worshiping at the moment to get us through this <laughs> but yeah they would drop stones into the mm -hmm. the hermes uh fire pit thing to uh even yeah. Boris Karloff went yeah, out there and uh -huh. dropped the stone in it at, near the mm -hmm. end. Yeah. The, 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 uh, so yeah, he was he was a hard character to get a handle on. Mm -hmm. um, 
So Mark Kramer plays Oliver, who ends up, he's a uh, reporter for the Boston Star, who's there to interview the general. The film starts off with him in a tent in the battlefield, and uh, there's this whole scene going on. And Chad alluded to it where uh, a general kills himself. Mm-hmm. Just because, well, he pretty much gave him the option. You want me to do yeah. it or you want you want yeah. to do it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The general kind of gives him the stink eye and he goes, eh. yeah. but it, it didn't sound like, you know, it was one of those, uh, look, this one unit was late getting there. The minute they got there, I pushed him into battle. And mm-hmm. He goes, that's all right. It, it was your man under your command. So mm-hmm. uh, this was a guy. Well, I didn't, I didn't order. know they were Greek at the time. And, um, you know, so that kind of took me aback a little bit that, well, wait a minute. Everybody here's got an American accent. And they're telling the other generals or guys to go out and kill themselves. So that kind of threw me a little bit until they all said, realized they were all, they were Greek. And that could have been a different, that could have been a different uh, set of rules there. They were going by. I don't know. But it just, that, that, that was kind of harsh. <laughs> yes. You know. Yeah. So, and he uh, and he the way the Boris Karloff uh character acted like like uh he just kind of nodded his head afterwards mm-hmm. like yes that was a hard but right thing to do. You know, mm-hmm. it was very um started building that kind of um moral yeah. cruelty that he had. Up, yeah. 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 You got to do the hard thing, right? Yeah. And mm-hmm. I have to make it happen and it's something I have to do and you know yeah, so the war they're talking about is the First Balkan War, 1912-1913, where Greece, Bulgaria, Serbia, and Montenegro fought against the declining Ottoman Empire. Hmm. Uh, so yeah, it was, and and when when he and uh, you know the general talks to uh, Oliver and says, I'm going to go over to this island cemetery and visit my wife's grave. And apparently he hasn't been there for a long time. Mm-hmm. And uh, so here, come on with me. And they go walking across this battlefield. And that's an incredible scene too, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. mm-hmm. that's that's just crazy with those mm-hmm. bodies everywhere. Mm-hmm. And then when they get across the battlefield, then they come up against a, a cart full of dead bodies that's being mm-hmm. pulled by people. Mm-hmm. And they can't use horses because the horses won't understand how important it is, I guess. Yeah, I, like the horses yeah, will uh, stop working mm-hmm. when they're tired, but the men will keep working no, even beyond their, when they should stop. Yeah. Yeah. All that to set up how much of a hard ass he was, mm-hmm. you know, too. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Um, so then we have. Alan Napier and his wife, Mm -hmm. Catherine Emery, and they're ambassadors to something or another. Mm -hmm. Gotham Um, City. Like, (laughs) yeah. Actually, yeah, it said something weird. It was like Adrianople or something like that. Anyway. Uh, And Ernst Deutsch, who plays Dr. Drossus, Mm -hmm. they're talking to Catherine Emery or Mrs. Mm -hmm. St. Almond. And I, thought, I like. I, oh, oh, go ahead, Jeff. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I thought she was great. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, she like was. I, I think I have some other pictures of her. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. top picture, she just has this. I don't know, one of those like knowing smiles or so. She mm-hmm. just seems really centered. Yep. Yeah, she seemed very wise and centered and strong. Even though, even though she was, her. yeah, well, even the, even though she, <laughs> even was, though she was frail, yeah. she was frail, but um, she was smart and protective of Thea, and you know, just her body was frail. I think, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, I thought she did great I... too. Yeah, I, I really liked her character. Um, I feel like she did a really good job kind of getting the story, moving the story across. And then when she got out of the, um, 
coffin and, and the, from the bottom picture there. I mean, mm -hmm. wow, that was yeah. that was scary. And she did it was. she did a great job. Um, and she was just like the avenging angel almost. It was she just was, like she was taking care of business. <laughs> yeah. You ain't safe in that house no more. Now yeah. the lady came back from the from the dead. Yep. You know? And she didn't yeah. waste any time picking up that nope. trident. Uh, nope. uh -huh. And mm -hmm. she just walks by yeah. so nonchalant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, so yeah, that's yeah. the way. That's the way you got to do it. You know, these movies where people walk up and then got to talk to them for five minutes and explain to them why no. they're killing them. Yeah. yeah. She just walks in and kills There's them. No There's no reason. Know what's going yeah. on. <laughs> There's no reason for us to talk. You so must die. Kill them <laughs> I know. Are you the one that was talking crap about me before? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it wasn't me. It was that. You know, Ed. <laughs> and then the ending when she um, just kind of ran off the cliff. I was like, yeah. I did not see that coming. No, I didn't either. <laughs> I did not either. I was like, wow, what an amazing, just at the end, everything was happening. And it was just, it had me sucked in. Uh, for a second, back to uh, Ernst Deutsch. He was in The Golem, the silent really? movie that we did. Oh, okay. Really? Um, he played a, one of the rabbis. Um, oh. Rabbi Famulus or something like that. Huh. Uh, hmm. I had to go look it up, and then when I, when I looked at the pictures, I saw him. I recognized hmm. him. So. Mm -hmm. I thought he um, was good, too, and he also had a character that I, I that rang true to, for me. Um as a doctor and, you know, but also understanding with um, Mrs. Uh, Aubin, St. Aubin. Yeah, and, and you're right. He was a doctor that knew that, uh, I guess this kind of is sort of a thing that happens in the movie, that death has no master kind mm -hmm. of thing, you know. We, we do what we can. These are the things you need to do, but in the mm -hmm. end, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. The... Uh, and a lot of people don't know that. I know my mom was kind of like that. You know, the doctors were going to fix everything. Mm -hmm. Well, and I also was struck with um, how they established a little bit about their character by having him, him come over. You know, like he was not yeah. on the island. He came on the island mm -hmm. knowing that there, it was likely that there was going to be um, this yeah, so uh, they, plague there. And he knew yeah, he everybody has leave. septicemic plague. Mm-hmm which is, I kept reading about this, that was the uh, rarest of the three plagues after bubonic plague and pneumonic plague. Hmm. Uh, but also, and so what do they say? One, at one point it's fleas mm -hmm. and the wind, and they're full of moisture. And when the Sirocco comes, the hot winds uh, Burn kills them. them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they were screwed until the wind came. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he was a nice character. And then also at the end when he tells uh, Albrecht, you know, I'm done. That, mm -hmm. that little line, yeah. those lines that mm -hmm. Chad said at the beginning mm -hmm. were him saying. Well, he, like yeah. Daphne, Daphne said, surrender. he mm -hmm. came there knowing that he might mm -hmm. not make it off of there. Mm -hmm. You know, that was, uh, I liked his character a lot mm -hmm. too. He wasn't afraid mm -hmm. of anything. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, so here's uh, Madame Kira with General Faridis in mm -hmm. both shots, but mm. she was like Terrible. the little, she was like the devil whispering in mm -hmm. your ear. You know? That uh, that whole scene when um, um, uh, it's not what uh, what's the Thea? name of the uh, Thea? Yeah, sorry, I forgot. Thea That's was in the room with um, Miss Saint Aubin and. Kira was just saying, whispering those things mm. through the door, tell you know, basically just driving her crazy and um, you know, threatening her and mm -hmm. oh my gosh, yeah, yeah. it's evil, what it's what, terrible, what, terrible. <laughs> what, the, what are you doing for Valica? Yeah. For Valak for Valica. <laughs> what are you doing, V? <laughs> what do you do behind locked doors for Valica? Mm -hmm. For Valica, yeah. I have mm -hmm. twisted rose. Yes. Briggs before your door. I'd before. have took about five minutes of that before I opened the door and started swinging. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have put gold in the fire and across the ashes on the door. Yeah. Vervalica, Vervalica, Vervalica. Yeah. Oh, I'd have been looking for the trident myself. <laughs> the trident. 
<laughs> she's just outside this locked door, just yes, like, yeah. never nuts messing I mean, with what? her. Yeah, messing with her. Yeah, let's not taunt the demon. Exactly. What are yeah. you doing? <laughs> And Thea, yeah. uh, you know, knows that she's going to get blamed for this. Yeah. You know, so she she kept her cool. But, uh, yeah. yeah, she was just terrible. Mm -mm -mm. Kira. Yeah, she says something, too, about, uh, and now there's that other one who dies by a verbalica, becomes a verbalica. A verbalica, yeah. So right. that's why she's saying that St. Mm -hmm. Alvin is. Uh-huh. Um, She's just like this whisper of Lane horrible Simic. stuff. <laughs> I don't know how and to she, pronounce that. The way she played Boris Karloff's character. I mean, yes. when he first set foot through the door, she was on mm -hmm. him about. On him, yeah. And he was like mm -hmm. dismissing her, like, "Old mm -hmm. woman, your stories are mm -hmm. not, yeah. you know, fit right. for someone else, not me." And then yeah. she kept doing it, and kept yeah. doing it until he finally started to yeah. believe her. That she was just an interesting. Picked uh, away, picked away at it, mm -hmm. picked away at it. Yeah, yeah. He, so he you're, actually you're scoffed at her. For mm -hmm. quite a while. He did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She keeps mm -hmm. pointing out all these quote unquote evidences. Right? Uh -huh. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And slowly it gets to him when his when the doctor dies and he can't, you know, basically his 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 reality kind of starts falling apart. Mm -hmm. It does. Mm -hmm. It does. Mm -hmm. Um, so this is Ellen Drew who plays Thea, who is the St. Albans assistant, kind of. Um, yeah. She's yeah, traveling so. with him and supposed to take care of. Mm -hmm. And I thought she was great. I mean, she mm -hmm. has that. I think that look there in the top picture is mm -hmm. when she refuses to pour wine for General Ferides, Ferides mm -hmm. uh, because at one time in his career, he was a tax collector in her district and apparently killed people for or mm -hmm. did something nasty for mm -hmm. uh, people that didn't pay taxes. And mm -hmm. <clears throat> She says they were your own citizens, and he says if they're not paying taxes, they're not Greek. Yeah, he was definitely a very law and order general. <laughs> yeah, oh my God. yeah, <laughs> totally, totally justified all that. And then the bottom picture mm -hmm. is when she's cowering in the corner mm -hmm. uh, after Mrs. St. Albans mm -hmm. and, and that trance comes in and kills mm -hmm. Madame Kira. Mm -hmm. It's just. Was, so good. So good. So I, uh -huh. I think I showed, let's see, I showed that one. Uh -huh. So these are more just just pictures of the women uh -huh. interacting uh -huh. together. There, Mrs. Uh -huh. St. Alban, and the bottom picture is trying uh -huh. to tell off Madame Kira to leave her alone, uh -huh. leave uh -huh. Thea alone. Mm -hmm. She's I got love... Thea convinced. It's almost mm -hmm. like gaslighting. She's got her yep, convinced. Exactly. She is. Yeah. What if you know what, what if it did. is? Right. She's like, yeah. what if it is me and I don't know it? I don't uh -huh. realize yeah. it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you you may not remember what you do at the night. Mm -hmm. as the like mm -hmm. a Vordalac. Let's just call it Vordalac. <laughs> that's what I, I keep like trying to like I can remember how to say it. I like the scenes in the in the because all of the the three women uh, slept kind of in the same room or in the same area. Yeah, and several times there was this lighting um, coming in through the blinds or the windows or whatever. Um, there's quite a few scenes with it, and I thought that was yeah, really, Thea really beautiful. Yeah, and Madame Kira slept in the same room, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, Mrs. St. Albans had, Alban had, Alban had, had her own, had room, her own yeah. room, yeah. And then, of so course, just that, somewhere, so. that costuming yeah. of, of um, you know, Thea and um, St. Alban are in white clothes, but Kira's in all black. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Oh, yeah, uh, and then there's the, the lighting. The, the, there's, the like, post bars in this mm -hmm. room. It's like Mm -hmm. I mean, literally in this island, they're in they're in prison, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. The claustrophobia leave. was definitely. I was struck by that too. The the claustrophobia first of you know, being stuck on this island, and and then in the coffin, her being afraid of waking up, being buried alive. It was just very very claustrophobic and. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Just building the sets, on that. The sets were small. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, that's these are some of these are kind of hard to see, but but mm -hmm. uh, that's how good they are with the the shadows and stuff. Mm -hmm. The uh, then I mm -hmm. I like this one in the bottom with uh, Boris Karloff standing out there by the pillar. I did mm -hmm. something about it. Yeah, 
Um, well, I think that's when he's really starting to doubt things. That's when he dropped the stone yeah, in, the, yeah. in the fire. Yeah. And what's his name caught him and said, ah, mm -hmm. the old mm -hmm. lady. She was mm -hmm. over there laughing at him mm -hmm. like, ah, yeah. so you're you're offering the, to the gods, too, or whatever mm -hmm. she said. Mm -hmm. And he's like, shut up, old woman. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, pretty much. <laughs> well, and, and then the top one, I think, is when, well, except does he do that in the dark? But anyway, he's he's intimidating Thea mm -hmm. and moving towards her, and she's getting mm -hmm. scared. She did a she did a great yeah. job, I thought. Because uh, yeah. he's also messing with her in the same way yeah. as Kira with the gaslighting and the making her question question herself. And mm -hmm. well, so he, he tells he tells Oliver he and Oliver share a room, and Oliver goes, "Oh, whoa, she she could kind of spunky. She's told you what for. Mm -hmm. She wouldn't." Pour you that wine and he goes oh that doesn't bother me i don't care what mm -hmm. people think about me mm -hmm. that night mm -hmm. he's out yeah. in the hallway confronting yeah. her yeah. and yet it does bother yes. me <laughs> <laughs> yes. awesome Crikey. yeah um and then the, this other uh there just was so much so much stuff here mm -hmm. so it, more shadows so mm -hmm. i thought that top scene was that top picture, that scene when he's washing his hands right before, yeah, he sentences the other guy to death. Basically, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is like weird with those shadows mm -hmm. behind him on the tent. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. just was, uh, yeah, creepy. that's good. And then the shot of Thea standing. I think that's in the room or in the hallway there. Where, mm -hmm. um, waiting to see. I mean, like, jeez. She thinks Mrs. St. Aubin is still in the room, but she can't see her because mm -hmm. uh, it's so dark until until uh, the general comes in and he's a, he's on the verge of dying. So he collapses on her bed. He's going to try to kill her. And uh, boom, once again, Mrs. St. Aubin just mm -hmm. walks straight over, boom, stabs him with the pitchfork. Mm -hmm. I think you were going to start talking about Helene Themig and maybe uh -huh, I uh -huh. interrupted you. No, um, go for it. She, um, I, I mean, I don't know um, specifically much about her, but she seems to have been a very um, famous, um, talented actress in Vienna or actor um, in Vienna and um, Austria came to America um, as ex in exile with her very famous husband. And, um, but so it sounds like, and she comes from a famous uh, acting family. So I get the impression she was kind of a, you know, a big deal. Yeah. Um, she did it. She did a great job. I mean, she was evil and the, the costumes with her and you know, how stern her face is. Mm -hmm. She was, yeah. And at first you have a little bit, I had a little bit of sympathy for her. Like when she's first introduced because She's like stayed on to help the um, archaeologist, you know, just kind of it's her house and she's taking care of the house. And then you slowly see um, kind of where she's coming from once mm -hmm. she is introduced to um, the general. Um, Love his hair. Dude. Yeah. Yes. She, <laughs> his curly hair. She was awesome. married to uh, Max Reinhardt, a German mm -hmm. producer. Yeah. Well, uh, several of these people, uh, Ernst Deutsch, too, uh, fled Germany after okay. Hitler took power. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, Hitler, of these, you know, these, well, I'll leave this to the, towards the end because I was going to show those pictures then. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, let's see. I think I showed this. Oh, the other thing, I think there was a, a lot of neat devices here. I thought one of them was this tunnel. That you had to mm -hmm. go through to get to other sides of the island or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that was just crazy. I don't know the the set and how they tried to make it look like kind of like the, the painting. painting. You know, yeah, could, could be that island. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the stone stairs and the passageway where the I guess the crypts were on either side. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think so. That's um, how I imagined it. It was. And there's uh, Thea in the bottom picture. She's in that tunnel mm -hmm. or passageway. You could kind of see a light square kind of behind her head. 
That's yeah. the door on the other end. And that's where you have that scene where she's, she hears something that says, Oliver, is that you? And then says, Kira. Mm -hmm. And then that's what sets off Mrs. St. Aubin. She mm -hmm. screams Kira and runs out. Mm -hmm. And there's Ooh, a bunch chick. of little, <laughs> well, there's a bunch of little, what I would call looting scenes, but I guess, mm -hmm. you know, they're ropes and scenes where <laughs> you just see a little shadow of somebody moving mm -hmm. in there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's just she was a like a bird or a, a yeah, I don't know, a bat or a bird yeah. or, like I said, like an avenging angel or something. Just There's just some weird, weird yeah. bird calls. She was doing too. And the flowing a nightgown that she was wearing was just like mm -hmm. diaphanous kind of stuff happening. And yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the general, even as he's dying, says, you know, he saw. I the, saw her. Yeah. Saw the verbalica. Mm -hmm. Like a uh, grave white. Face mm -hmm. and wings and eyes mm -hmm. of death, and she yeah. came out of the darkness. Blah blah blah. So mm -hmm. they assure him that she is gone now. So he... yes, yeah. shh, 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 shh. he's gone now. <laughs> Go ahead and die. <laughs> so like, one of the things I wanted to mention too, which I thought was interesting, is a lot of scene transitions are this flash to this statue of Cerberus. Mm -hmm. The three-headed dog that guards the gates guards. of hell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. To keep the dead in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which, and and what is the general's nickname? You remember that? Yeah, the watchdog. The yeah. watchdog, uh -huh. and he's trying to keep everybody on the island. In, on the island, yeah. So, mm -hmm. it, it, it was, I I don't know. I mm -hmm. just thought mm -hmm. that was neat stuff. Mm -hmm. And there yeah. was this weird montage of. Uh, Hands and bowls. Yeah. When they were cleaning hands, themselves. Yeah. Crashing mm -hmm. on the sea. And, uh, mm -hmm. So I, I just, I think there was a, uh, at first watch, you could just watch this and go, eh. Mm -hmm. Or if you pay attention to all the intricacies of the dialogue and the way that they're working on them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. What they're doing, uh, what they're establishing, what they're, yeah. It becomes a lot more. Mm -hmm. So we mentioned the painting. So I'm going to, throw this up here the the painting is on screen as the opening credits roll so it's kind of hard to see in this shot uh but the painting is in the middle and the credits opening credits are in the bottom but you could kind of see on the right and left hand edges mm -hmm. you could see those exact things coming from mm -hmm. the painting isle of the dead by uh uh shoot i got his name here somewhere bakken i think Bachlan, yeah. Arnold Bachlan. Mm -hmm. um, and he did like six versions of this for different people. Like he did one and then somebody else wanted it. And so he just, you know, somebody said, I like it. This is pre Prince, you know, um, or they, I don't know. I, I want that. So he'd paint another one. It wasn't <laughs> like you went and bought a print. Yeah. But apparently these paintings were all over Europe by, at some point, a great, lot of people great painting. owned that. Mm -hmm. It's a yeah. very, very common painting. So it's a, it is, it's a, it's a cemetery island. You can see the doors and the rock walls for the, the crypts or the tombs and the, yeah. I think Cypress trees. And, sure. and it's neat that um, the, Bachlan described it as just as a dream picture. Like he didn't really give a lot of, I was reading that he just didn't really give a lot of explanation to the mm -hmm. meaning. Um, mm -hmm. And, but I could see, you know, how this would inspire all sorts of stories and. Um, yeah. Uh, well, they have different, uh, all the different paintings are all slightly different in mm -hmm. tone and arranged like, you know, the islands a little mm -hmm. different, etc. But. Um, they all have that, and this it's really hard to see in this one. I should pull up a full screen one, but they all have that boat mm. uh, with, there's actually a casket in that boat. Oh. Concern all the other time I wasted. Uh, <laughs> what was the name of the uh, person or the entity that, would take you across the river. Uh, river sticks. The river the sticks. Name? I'll look it up. I can't remember it on my own. Okay, so here's here's a painting full size. So you can see the 
the boat heading towards this mm. island. There's, mm -hmm. a, there's a figure in white, and then across mm -hmm. the front of the boat is a casket, a casket. that's white. Mm -hmm. And that's in every one of the paintings. And you can also, now you can see how those doors are in the stone walls mm -hmm. uh, around the trees. So it's an impressive. The ferryman's name was Charon. Or Charon, yeah. Charon, yeah. The ferry. I wonder driver, if that's yeah. what they're representing there. Mm -hmm. I think we did we did a movie on that. Uh, Strangler of the Swamp or something mm -hmm. like that. You remember that, Chad? It was one of those poverty row pictures from the 40s that Joseph I, did. Uh, yeah, I remember that. But I don't remember. Uh... There was a thing there about the ferryman and... Uh, Anyway, it's been a while. I don't, I don't remember things like I used to. Uh, so a couple things I just wanted to, uh, yeah, to, <laughs> I'm not going to say nothing. Um, I just wanted to mention the cinematography was by Jack McKenzie. Luton usually liked to use uh, Nicholas Musaraka, mm. but this guy does him very well. Yes. He does a great job in the look and the feel of this picture, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is the music is by Lee Harline, Arline, and it's the only movie that Roy Webb did not score for hmm. Luton. Uh, and this guy has quite a uh, quite a uh, resume, I guess. Um, I know I have notes. He did the uh, scores for the Silly Symphony cartoons for Disney in the 30s. Oh, okay. Cool. And he also did the, worked on the scores for Snow White and Pinocchio, and he won Oscars for the score for Pinocchio, which included an Oscar for Best Original Song, When You Wish Upon a Star, huh. which became Disney's like theme song. Right. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, so anyway, uh, then he goes on to do work, do some of these and uh, did this movie. He also did, uh, I think they said War of the Worlds and the Seven Faces of Dr. Lau. Uh -huh. So anyway, I, I'm. Pinocchio, that scared the heck out of me. And I saw that in the theater with my dad. And it was oh, wow. Did I'm sure it wasn't the, the original, one? but um, <laughs> no, I just oh, remember I made I made my dad leave. I made us leave. Those <laughs> Disney movies were scary. <laughs> and I, I still mean, haven't. Snow White, I still Scott haven't the seen Witch, the end and... of it. I still haven't seen the end of Pinocchio. I think Those it's probably Disney would be really hard to watch now, just because it's pretty kind of offensive in some ways. But I, I, I just remember being like in the theater, terrified. <laughs> <laughs> like freaking out. A lot of those Disney cartoons. <laughs> yeah, super way. scary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the evil stepmothers <laughs> were always witches. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. Fantasia, that one scene with Mickey, the magician's apprentice, mm -hmm. scared yes. the living crap out of mm -hmm. me as a kid. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's a great. That's mm -hmm. now I look at it, and it's a, just an excellent, it's a right. masterpiece. Yeah. But. Uh, well, and uh, that's a lot of kids, I think, exposure to mm -hmm. uh, classical music. Yeah. Is yeah. Cartoons. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that's, um, boy, there was something there. Oh, I, did you see the Del Toro Pinocchio? No, I didn't. Mm -hmm. uh -uh. Is it good? I haven't seen it. It's oh, out there mm -hmm. now. Um, mm. I'll see anything the, uh, he does, even if it. Isn't yeah, as good, yeah, you know. Yeah. Even if it's not one of my favorites, I'll, I'll watch it at some point. <laughs> oh, Jack McKenzie too for a cinematographer. He also did uh, Vampire from 1957 and Return oh. of Dracula in 1958. Cool. So we've done one of his flicks. All righty. I anything else we want to say about this? I, just, I think We're it's really longer good. than the movie by ten minutes right yeah. now. So it's a it's a really good movie. I, mm -hmm. I and I wouldn't. I don't know if I'd recommend it to a horror fan, maybe a Boris Karloff fan, mm -hmm. um, because it's more like I said, it's more of a psychological uh, thriller type of a thing going on mm -hmm. there. Not as much horror, but 
but uh, it's it's a well put together, well written, well directed uh, mm -hmm. movie. Um, mm -hmm. And if you just are a fan of good movies, then then I would I would mm -hmm. gladly uh, recommend it. Mm -hmm. And you guys helped me put my uh, fin help me get the, my finger on what was so interesting to me is is the just the characters and their interactions with each other mm. and um, just really that um, I was just really struck with how um, the general and Kira they essentially through their cruelty created this monster that they were saying was around. They created her and. Mm. Um, and she killed them. She protected the person that they accused her of. Yeah. And it, then it became she a self fulfilling him. prophecy. It, yes. Right? Yeah, it was because of their cruelty that this that this happened. And well, in addition to the, you know, yeah. the the plague, but <laughs> and it made, but that it made, superstition, those those feelings yeah. and yeah. And it made Karloff uh, not just a, a two dimensional bad mm -hmm. guy. Yep. I mean, he yeah. he was asking his friend. Right. The reporter guy that, you mm -hmm. know, is this, you know, what do you think about this? Or is, am right. I correct in thinking? Right. He, he was torn. Mm -hmm. He was really, yes. he wanted to know, mm -hmm. you know, what was, you know, the other people's viewpoints mm -hmm. on it. Yeah. But the that was a great dialogue. Kept getting in it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. He kept asking him, am I mm -hmm. different? And he'd say, well, mm -hmm. no, you're like, oh, well, no, I'm not. I'm not getting my point across. So right. Yeah. It and, uh, he just kept yeah. on. Yeah. That was an interesting uh, conversation. And that's when mm -hmm. I started kind of seeing that there was more going on with that character that yeah. he, he really he was. He wasn't yeah. just a, a mm -hmm. run of the mill cut out bad right. guy. He was, mm -hmm. he had, he had layers donkey. Yeah. <laughs> Many layers. <laughs> well, the idea too, that the, uh, you know, when something bad happens to people of faith, Sometimes they got to come up with something, something yeah. to blame it on. Mm -hmm. you yeah, know? and uh, essentially so it, his uh, he lost his faith. Guy. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, and he lost in the and the general lost his faith. I don't know in the in science or the doctor or himself mm -hmm. that he couldn't save them. You know, so he kind of had a you know like a falling out or a crisis of faith well, yeah. in some way. Um, you know, he went by him going and putting mm -hmm. that stone in that fire yeah. said a lot mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. Because he had just got through telling them that, mm -hmm. you know, there's, you know, there's, ah, that's old dog, he mm -hmm. pishot, mm -hmm. all that. He walks right out and puts a mm -hmm. rock in that right. just to make sure, just mm -hmm. to make sure they're not, mm -hmm. you know, in case mm -hmm. they're right, mm -hmm. you know, and that he was doing everything possible to right. protect them, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought the, the, the three women characters are, are just yeah. key to yeah. mm -hmm. everything yeah. that's mm -hmm. going on in the movie. Yeah. And they're yep. such strong Mm -hmm. characters in their own way mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah um, mm -hmm. yeah i think every character presented here was a mm -hmm. great a great character and and had multi-dimensional mm -hmm. it wasn't just it i get it i think a lot of people look at movies like this as b movies or, or mm -hmm. whatever but this was a well mm -hmm. put together movie yeah. yeah you know all around mm -hmm. so. uh, i could see how not every horror fan would this is yeah. not their thing, mm -hmm. yeah. you mm -hmm. know, but if you think, you know, if cat people is one of your favorite movies, I think you will find the, mm -hmm. the good in this movie too. Mm -hmm. um, I agree. Cause there's hints, hints at the supernatural. You don't, you know, mm -hmm. all righty. I think that's it, but we do have the feedback. Some feedback letters not a ton we read letters. your letters uh chad you want to take the first one there oh my god for episode 160 dr <laughs> Jekyll and mr hyde the silent 1920 version oh by the way i just watched the spencer tracy version this afternoon Ew. well and? ingrid bergman is awesome but okay. uh, it was okay it's just mm -hmm different you know i'd go frederick march and uh john barrymore every time and i you know i always wondered about these transformations just like the wolfman mm -hmm. what, what happens to their hair yeah their hair does it like clothes. suck back in or <laughs> just, or, oh you know. god gross <laughs> <laughs> just, just those are all rappers. good all questions right. good questions yeah no, Episode 160, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, the 1920 version. 
uh, Joel Ashadali says. And we don't hope, we don't know for sure, but I'm I mean, hoping he came up I'm, with like four versions of his name. I'm <laughs> hoping hoping that's right. You you tell us if we're wrong, Joe. Yes. Joel. I don't know if it's Joel Joe Lashadali or Joel Ashadali. So you're gonna have to or straighten Joel us out. Joel Ashadali. Yeah. Or... <laughs> Write more. Tell us. Straighten us out. Yeah. Let us anyway. know. Let us know where we stand there, Joe. All right. And he says, "Great pick, Daff." Yay! <laughs> He's not a first syllable. Of awesome. <laughs> Spent more time trying to figure his name out than reading his letter. Um, and then uh, Daphne, we have so this was part of our debacle, but it, it, it's worth repeating. Uh, Brian Clark texted mm -hmm. me with the answer to our Dick Smith dilemma. Is yeah, it wasn't a debacle. We were discussing the dis not a debacle, <laughs> yeah. uh, conundrum. Yeah. Uh, is this the real Dick Smith or investigation? Bringing up, I guess questions. they're both real. Is this the famous Dick Smith or or a yeah. different is this Dick Smith? The for Dick Smith, <laughs> the alligator people, episode one sixty one. Brian Clark's been on a couple of DOH episodes. So Brian, if you're listening to this, and I know you are, you got to <laughs> tell me how to get one of those oxygen destroyers you got. <laughs> And if you out. built it yourself, I'm you, <laughs> money's no object. Okay, Ooh. I can do well, the lights for a month. The story was uh, there, there's some confusion on that, and I should get him to like explain it out. But he went to Japan, and I think he was allowed to have pictures taken with that. Oh, okay. Uh, some guy had it, and I thought that he claimed he got it off of I don't know some old thing. Well, well. Uh, Dirk Rogers claim that they keep the real one under lock and key. Hmm. Whoever let them take pictures with it said it was a real one, a real one, you know, hmm. so that was used in the movie. So I need to get the, and then, and then everybody talked over each other and I couldn't quite get <laughs> what was going on in the Godzilla versus uh, Megalon episode. Just more so questions. Might have, might have more questions. Okay, so Brian about <laughs> Dick Smith. Brian Clark, Alligator People 161. Regarding Dick Smith and Alligator People, it's definitely not that one. I talked to the Monster Party guys when I did an article on it for Scream. They put me in touch with Scott Essman and Michael Blake, who were put on the track of researching it by Constantine Nasser. There are photos of the AP Dick Smith working on the fly working on the fly mask and it's definitely a different guy. Mm. So okay. we've got lots Excellent. of, lots of uh, backup for that. We have lots of expert backup mm -hmm. and the monster mm -hmm. party guys are the ones that did the commentary on the Blu-ray that said mm -hmm. it wasn't the mm -hmm. real guy. So yeah, cool. Well, there you go. Thanks, Brian. I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> episode 162, this Island earth. Chad, you want to take that one? You can't. Uh, from Mikey Z. Mikey Z. Feedback here from Peachy. <laughs> I think I said Peachy after after we read one of his feedbacks. I think I said that's Peachy. Okay, <laughs> Peachy. Like I, I don't know. Another what is it? Movie? Mikey Z or Peachy? I, <laughs> either way, Mikey Peach, Peachy Mike. He's a Peach. Peachy Z. Another seminal movie in 1950s sci-fi. Not as refined as War of the Worlds or Forbidden Planet, but this island Earth illustrates universal stamp on it. A lo little low budgety looking, but still give great fun. From Metaluna, from Metaluna to Mutants, this film was the first color sci-fi flick for Universal. Man, I can't read or speak. <laughs> Like Peter Brady on the It's Time to Change episode of uh, Brady <laughs> uh, <laughs> Thankfully, the Jack Arnold controversy has been put to rest. The mute ant, and yes, I'm spelling it this way, our leftover creature designs from, uh, I believe it came from outer space, repurposed here for the self-cleaning when dead menial workers. Did I read that correctly? Uh, well, they were menial workers, so right. repurposed here for the self-cleaning when dead. Um, 
Yeah, and I think we talked about that, and it came from outer space. I'm not sure we mentioned it uh, in this island Earth. Okay. But we said one of their original designs for the aliens, and it came from outer space, ended up being uh, this island Earth. Okay. Mutants. Mutants. Great special effects, even on the universal budget. From the explosions, flying saucers, the toothbrush, interplanetary body transparency to the planetary decimation. Do you do you did you ever learn uh, punctuation at all, Mikey, in school? Because I'm, <laughs> I'm running out of breath on each one of these uh, paragraphs. Russell Johnson, a Jack Arnold stock player, appears here as a doomed scientist. Rex Reason and Faith, Dem how do you say her name? Demurg. 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 A kidnapped scientist <laughs> who go along for the ride while Jeff Morrow and Lance Fuller are aliens who no one suspects as being from anywhere but Earth. <laughs> and we complain about the scientists of our time. Okay. Great discussion, guys. And Daphne, as a woman, knocked another one out into the <laughs> outer reaches of Metal Luna. Can't wait for the next one, even though no one knows what it will be. I know it will be a cl classic. Love you guys. Thanks, Mikey. Aww. Thanks, Mikey Z. Peachy. Appreciate Mikey it. P. Peachy Z. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one best. Yeah, here we go. So, thanks for the feedback. Uh, Mikey, Brian, Ann, Joe or Joel. Um, Plenty of ways to stay in touch. We love feedback. Please send your feedback to feedback at gruesomemagazine.com or better yet, leave comments on Gruesome Magazine's YouTube channel. Or if you join a, a Patreon group, there's places to comment there. And you will get DOH podcasts a week to two weeks in advance of when they are when they go live. And we love feedback. So anyway. Here we are. I feel like singing Happy Trails or something. That's it for this episode. But every two weeks, we'll be focusing on a specific film release between 1920 and 1969. Next up is one chosen by Daphne. Do we know what that is? Yes. It's a German film that I haven't seen called The Head from 1959. It's dubbed. Don't worry, Chad. It's dubbed. Oh, God. And it's dubbed lovely and um uh the original title um jeff will do this much better than me but it's die nacht die nacht und der satan um, the night of satan and it's called a scient in the the synopsis a scientist invest invents a serum that keeps a dog's head alive after its body dies Ooh. Is this a spinoff from the Manster? <laughs> well, it's night. I, it's <laughs> let's just say there's a head. There's a head with no body. So I'm a down. Head a head transplant happens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not it. Yeah. Not as long as it's not hands. <laughs> it's not hands. It's just a head. Okay. Oh, and it stars <laughs> people named Horst and Helmut. Mm -hmm. So, God, yeah, please cool. let them call each other that in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> what are their names in the movie? They we talked about it in um, you, one of the recent editions of Dark Side, and my hubby was telling me about it. And oh, cool! Yes. Where's where can we find it? it? Oh, it? it's on Tubi, okay. and um, I think it's on YouTube also. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What year is it? I'm sorry. Nineteen fifty-nine. Okay. The head. The head. I used to have a cousin, and they called him the head because his it, head was so big. So big. <laughs> like in um, "So I Married an Ex Murderer." Head. Yes, Woo. yes. Yeah. And that was that was it too. That, <laughs> they called head. one of my grandkids. Move your giant head out! <laughs> they called one of my grandkids Big Head Todd. Big Head Todd. Oh, <laughs> Todd. That's the name. Of well, his band. name wasn't Todd. It was oh, just, okay. That was sort of the nobody called him that to his face. That he does. I love Todd the and the Todd. monsters. He's, he's completely normal now. <laughs> he's regular head Todd now. That's what they call him. All right. Normal. All right. Well, well, my cousin, this head was so big, it outgrew his hair. Oh. <laughs> outgrew his hair. 
the head. I bought voice. a seventy-two inch <laughs> screen just to have your giant noggin right away. That's, Move. That's a surprise. That's a surprise. All of his hair got sucked in <laughs> into his giant head. Oh dear. Oh, All right. Well, he had red curly hair that just stuck up everywhere, <laughs> and it was like hilarious just oh. watching him watch TV. He needs to um, be on the show sometime. <laughs> yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll have to get him <laughs> His, his head's normal now. <laughs> well, that's no fun. <laughs> oh, okay. Did you guys ever have... Uh, we, we had a legend when I was a kid growing up in different parts of Iowa. I forget. You know, one of my cousins told me this or something called the watermelon baby. Yeah, I've heard of that. <laughs> I've heard that phrase, but I didn't... I don't, I don't think I've heard it around here. I think maybe I read it or something, but... You know, it was one of those ghost stories you tell at night about mm -hmm. the watermelon baby. You know, I've so. heard of that. But anyway, I've heard it's like the hook, age. right? The hook hanging from the, the car hook door. On the right? car door, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I think I'm seat. I'm wasting enough time here. So uh, thank you so much, Daphne and Chad. We You're hope, welcome. We think Doc will be back after a little R and R. And if it doesn't, who cares? Watermelon oh. baby. He's gonna miss the head. The naked. Oh, oh it's yeah. called. It's yeah. the naked and Satan. The naked and Satan is what the West German um, translation translation hmm. is. The naked and the naked and Satan. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. Say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Sign our suckers. <laughs> <laughs>